What's up, guys? We're back with another episode of <laughs> looking at stocks with Rare. So right now, what I have pulled up here is my TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim account. It's an old account. As you can see, there's no money in there, and even the quotes are partially delayed. So we're not looking at real-time data, but I kind of just want to give you guys some of the things that I do uh, when I first wake up in the morning and I evaluate the stock market, maybe consider buying some additional shares of a few stocks, uh, you know, and just some of the things that I look at. So first off, I want to see what the major indexes are doing for the day. So I'll, I'll go here, I'll click on indices. Boom. So we got the Dow here, which is which is one of the major indices. Um, it looks like the Dow is down. It tells you right here, the Dow is down 156 points, uh, 44 basis points, which is that percentage point there. Uh, so we got, we got a down market today. I'm gonna see if I can get a better uh, list of, um, of the major indexes today. Perfect, so we got the Dow, which like I said, it's down 153 points. You can see it right here. You got the NASDAQ composite, which is up uh, 0.35 basis points. SPX is the uh, S&P, so it looks like it's down eight points today. So really we've got a pretty, it's, it's a down market. I'd say relatively flat to down, uh, with the major burden being uh, here in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, you know, kind of a, a, a dull market today. Uh, some of the other things that you could do, which is pretty cool on Thinkorswim, do visualize and kind of get um, you know a broader look at what individual securities are doing, and we're gonna jump into some of these a little bit more in depth. Uh, but as you can see, the ones that are green means that they're performing well. So you got Microsoft here uh, that's up 3.30 percent, so we like to call that 30 basis points. Uh, you got Apple, looks like it's down 0.04%. So really what I wanna do first thing in the morning when I wake up and I'm looking at the stock market is I wanna see number one, is the overall market up or down, right? And we're looking at those three major indexes. We're looking at the Dow, we're looking at the NASDAQ, and then we're looking at the S&P, right? And we're gonna say, okay, it looks like the Dow's down, the S&P is down, but not by a lot. So the market's relatively flat today. There's not a lot of um, price movement. Uh, so kind of a, a, a bowl, a dull uh, day, if you may. And then, you know, I like to look at news, right? I, I like to go to news and let's see. Um, you know, you can pull up. So here, we can even pull up this. We'll go. These are some individual securities here. So we can go indices here. And this is just, this is going to provide Dow Jones specific news, right? So uh, TD or... Um, uh, Thinkorswim is interesting, and I'm not saying that they're the best platform, uh, but I, you know, you want to go to news and kind of see what's going on. Wall Street tips lower pre bail jobless claims fall further. So it looks like we had a jobless claims number out, which is basically uh, an economic indicator for how healthy the job market is. So jobless claims, the higher that number is, uh, the worse, because that means there are more people who are claiming to be jobless out there. The lower that number is. Uh, the better. So the fact that jobless claims fail, fall further, you see this headline here, uh, that could be considered relatively positive news. Um, so like I said, you want to come in, you want to look at what the major indexes are doing, you want to see if there's any major headlines uh, that are you know taking the media by storm that's causing the stock market to move in any particular directions. And then you kind of want to just go from there. PayPal, I, you know, I, I seen this news yesterday and uh, today PayPal considering to buy Pinterest. Uh, super interesting. And I was having a conversation with my girlfriend and I'm, I'm telling her, you know, it's so interesting because PayPal by itself is, is a payment merchant, right? And, and, and they're considering buying a social media company, right? Pinterest is strictly a social media company. And so the integration in those two business models would be super interesting to see what PayPal is looking to do with that. Um, I definitely wanna do some more research on, but so we hear the news that PayPal is looking to buy Pinterest. Let's see what Pinterest is doing today on that news. GINS, see Pinterest, pins, right? So it looks like, as so you guys can see right here, I'm gonna make it just one here. 
So it looks like Pinterest is down uh, 1.45, so that's a dollar and 45 cents, uh, just a, a adjusted to a dollar 44, and that's 2.30 percent. So Pinterest is a relatively cheap stock, trading at 61 dollars and 25 cents. Um, you know, it's it's definitely affordable if you were to consider buying it. Um, and you know, this is super interesting, right? PayPal considering to buy Pinterest. So something that I would look into, maybe I'm like, you know, thinking that this could be a positive thing if they get bought out. And a lot of things, sometimes when you hear about these companies being bought out, uh, there's going to be rumblings in the media about the price point that this company is going to be bought at. So let's just say PayPal is looking to buy Pinterest at a hundred dollars a share and it's currently trading at 61. That could be a potential bullish indicator that Hey, as this as this uh, as this uh, this buyout, this this purchase of the company gets closer and closer, it's it's not uncommon to see that stock price tick up to the actual buying price. Uh, so that could be a bullish opportunity, as far as I know. There's no news that's come out in the media in regards to what the price point would be that PayPal would purchase Pinterest at, but it's definitely something to consider. Maybe you know as these talks get more and more serious, but. Like I said, I told you, like I told you guys in the previous video, I really like to look at a year span, uh, maybe even go look at, you know, 180 days. This is a 180 day chart and kind of see what the under, underlying price point movement is. Go back to a year here. And if you look, I mean, they hit a low back in, what is that, November of 2020, right? They were at a trade net low of $48.29. Looks like they hit a high of 89.90 back in February. And now they're trading in between this high and the low at about $61 a share. And instantly, like I said, and I, and I discussed in my previous video, I know that we're gonna see resistance at this 89.90 price point. I'm gonna go ahead and take my tool, look for my trend line. And at this 89.90 price point, I know that there's gonna be some resistance there. I don't know, let's see. Well, let me, there we go. TD is a little bit different from uh, Fidelity. So I know that there's gonna be some resistance at 89.90. Um, and, and support and resistance level work, work great whether you're swing trading or you're an avid day trade. I'm currently not day trading. I did some day trading in the past. Right now I'm not day trading, uh, but this method of support and resistance level works great. Uh, whether you're swing trade, I do have a couple of swing trade positions in my portfolio right now that I've used support and resist levels to kind of get a good idea of the direction of the stock um, in the coming few couple weeks here. So we know we got we got some resistance at the 89.90 level. Also, general rule of thumb, uh, whole numbers tend to tend to create some resistance. So we're gonna see resistance at 89.90, and we're probably gonna see resistance at, at 90 even as well. Just general rule of thumb, right? Uh, and then you can see, it looks like we got a bottom out here uh, at the 4880. This was back in early October. So you can actually do that. Let's see, uh, in, uh, October 6th. So the stock price has shot up quite a bit um, in this short to medium term. And, and it looks like we got a bit of a um, potential flag pattern for me here. But... I would put some support here at this price point. So um, let's see what else I would look at. Let's see. Past few months here, looks like we hit a high here. And then you can help over the candlestick, see a high of 81.77. So I might put a um, resi or resistance line at 81.77. Um, Right, just uh, so this is kind of what I'm marking out. So I know we got support here at 40, got resistance here, 81, I'm seeing 81.77. Also looks like it topped, it hit a high here, a lower high. So it looks like a downward trend starting to form, but it hit a lower high here of 77.92. So I also know if it gets up to that point again, we're gonna see some resistance at 77.92. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to um put my put something there as well we'll just do that for now so we know there's gonna be resistance there resistance there 
Right now, once again, we're trading at 61.075, so we're a little bit far away from 77. Um, I wonder what call, and another question I would ask myself is, you see this big drop here from $74 a share to $61 a share, right? So that's over a $10 drop. You know, what happened here? Oftentimes I may go back and look at the news. You see news spans back, you know, back until, looks like we got news until August here. Sometimes I may ask like, okay, um, you know, what's going on? What caused this big drop here back in July where we, with the stock dropped this, this amount, right? And, and what's happened since? It looks like since it's kind of been trending down ever since, right? Ever since then, it's kind of been trending down and it looks like we got a big pop here recently, which is probably due to the, the talks of uh, them potentially being buy it, bought, bought out. So you're looking at some opportunity here. You know, it, it, it had this big drop back in July and then, and that's this is two months, two, three months of just stagnant downward trending trading with a bottom out here at previous one year uh, or previous year uh, low. So, you know, there could be some opportunity here before this buyout happens. We don't know exactly what the price point is that PayPal was looking to buy Pinterest, but something else I would look at is, okay, so it, it bottomed out here last time, right? And if I hover over this candlestick, you'll show like the low highs and lows here. If you hover over the candlestick, it looks like it's a low of 66.17. So we're gonna, there, there's potential resistance at 66.17, right? And this is actually a price point that we're pretty close to. I definitely wanna be sure that like, I know that, hey, last time it traded in around this range, which was a few months ago, we saw some, we saw it bottom out here and then it bounced. So we know that this is gonna be potentially a new resistance in this area. Right now it's at 60.87. So we know if it creeps up a little bit more, and it bounces past this 66, 17 point, it could it could bounce. It could bounce a little bit more, it could go up to this territory, or potentially find resistance here at uh, the low of this candle at 70.35, right? 70.35. So these are just some of the things that, you know, I, I look at, even whether I'm buying or selling or, you know, regardless, these are things that I'm gonna be wanting to look at.